Well, hello and welcome. And this is the start of a new series for 2022. This one is called Haunted Histories, which is going to be short stories um, based on fact, which involve some something gruesome or a haunting, uh, maybe a crime or a murder. So they're just going to pop up from time to time as I come across the stories. I'm here at a place called the Raw Peel. Um, Peel because there was a Peel Tower here. Um, and the story takes place in 1791 and involved the brutal murder of uh, an old lady who lived here called Margaret Crozier. And the location is very close to the village of Elsdon in Northumberland. William Winter was hung for the murder along with his two accomplices uh, at the West Gate in Newcastle. William Winter came from a criminal family. His father and two brothers were hung for horse stealing in the area, which was quite common, a legacy left over from the border reavers. Um, and Winter himself had been sent to Portsmouth, um, which was a, a, a prisoner uh, hulk, as it was called, um, where people served their sentence. But William Winter um, was sent to Portsmouth um, for numerous crimes. In 1791, he was released and returned to the northeast and was drinking one night in Newcastle when he met with two gypsy sisters, um, Jane and Eleanor Clark. They basically travelled the area as gypsies do, selling crockery and tin work. Some days before, the two sisters had come across Margaret Crozier on their travels and they had some idea that the woman was wealthy and of course this was not the case at all. She was just a, an old woman living on her own, selling a few, I think she was a draper, so selling bits and bobs as, as she could. At the time, Elsdon was quite uh, a large community, a population of about two and a half thousand people. So it was a lot bigger and busier than it is today. However, they thought that she was wealthy and they had this fixed in their head. So when they met with Winter, who just having been released had no money, um, they persuaded him that this would be an easy target. The night before the murder, they'd stayed in a nearby tavern and were discussing their plans in a corner. A local shepherd boy, um, who was also present, had overheard them and particularly noticed the nail marks in William Winter's boots. Now, in those days, boots were um, individually made and each boot would have a different nail pattern in them. And this crucial evidence was what eventually sent the three of them to the gallows. The shepherd boy had also noticed that Winter was carrying a butcher's knife, um, which obviously would have uh, attracted attention. So on a very wet and windy night on the 29th of August 1791, Winter arrived here at Margaret's uh, small dwelling 
and knocked at the door, claiming he was lost and asked to come in to get dry. Now, as you can see, it's pretty bleak up here. And Margaret, being a kind woman, let him in. She sat him by the fire and turned to get him a warm drink from the scullery. As she turned, Winter picked up the fireside poker and beat her on the head, fracturing her skull. She fell to the floor, but was still breathing and still alive. So he then took the butcher's knife and sliced open her throat. The two sisters who'd been hiding outside with the donkey they'd managed to steal immediately then rushed in and started emptying Margaret's house and shop and carried away as much as they possibly could get onto the back of this donkey and made their escape. When the body was discovered the following morning, the alarm was raised and the young shepherd boy immediately told the local constable of what he'd seen the night before. So it didn't take long to track the three of them down. As I say, Winter was a well-known criminal in the area um, and they were soon arrested, tried and then later hung on the 10th of August 1792 at the Westgate in Newcastle. The place where people were hung in Newcastle was the Gallagher, of course, uh, the gallows, um, obviously. Um, but they were hung at the West Gate, and that was simply that that was the road that connected Elsdon to Newcastle. So everyone passing would have seen the bodies hanging there. Winter's body was taken to Steng Cross, near to where the murder had taken place, and hung from a gibbet in chains and left there to rot. And this was a similar fate dealt to the Border Reavers when they were caught and served as a deterrent to others. The two sisters were given to local surgeons to cut up and do experiments on. The old Drover's Road, which passed this spot, which you can see here and has been recently resurfaced, um, and this was at the time one of the main roads from Scotland to Morpeth, which was the largest cattle market outside of London at that time. And so many people would have passed along that road and seen Winter's body hanging there. The body hung there until it completely rotted away and then the bones were scattered across the moorland and the gibbet dismantled. In 1867, Walter Trevelyan um, became the owner of Wallington Hall and Sten Cross is on the Wallington estate. So he ordered the reconstruction of the gibbet and hung a wooden effigy of um, Winter uh, from the gibbet. The effigy has now gone um, and the gibbet itself has been replaced several times as um, it's so bleak up here, the wood rots away very, very quickly. Several sightings of Winter's spectre have been seen on cold and windy nights standing next to the gibbet.